very good evening. These are our top stories for tonight. An official inquest has been confirmed in relation to the death of the late Honorable Pomale Sasalu Aukuso Pavihi, who was laid to rest this month on 15th January. This was revealed by the Director General for Social Services, Gaylene Tasmania, of whom expressed on behalf of the department their sincere and deepest condolences to the family. The inquest is a right for any persons under the Inquest Act 1964, meeting the relevant requirements. It's understood the inquest was received on the 24th of January. The request is now being considered by the Chief Justice, Coxhead, who is also set to arrive for court procedures this coming March. It's been advised that the Ministry and all other government departments involved will be informed of any directives provided by the Chief Justice on this matter. Gayling informed that as a ministry, they continue to review and reflect on processes, improvements and implement changes as necessary. She affirmed this applies to all departments under social services as they continue to actively serve the people of New Way. The nation bid farewell earlier this month to the late Honorable Paumale Sasalu Aokuso Pavihi, who passed away due to illness on 10th January and was laid to rest at his residence of Talamoe Tonga Awasele on 15th January. Honorable Paumale Pavihi, a former dignitary of New Way, held ministerial positions for two consecutive terms, commencing first in 1993 to 1996 and then having won his seat from 1996 to 1999, was responsible for the portfolios of finance, tourism and mui for New Way. Both ministerial terms were under the leadership of the Premier at the time, Honourable Frank Louis. In his excess of 20 years with government, not including his time as a minister, Honourable Pomale Pavihi bore witness to an exciting and privileged time for young government and administrators during the transcending period following the new constitution in 1974, whereby many prominent roles that were once held by expatriates were now localised and opened to young UN administrators to contest a time Honourable Pomale Pavihi took full advantage of successfully attaining many great roles holding off formidable opposition over the excess 20 years pre and post minister. As a distinctive figure of the Niue government, he held posts including inter alia becoming the first head of department for the new Justice Department, head of the land titling project, deputy registrar for the Niue land court and deputy registrar for births, deaths and marriages, chairperson for the Niue Development Bank Board and member of the Tourism Board. In his time as Tourism Minister, he too was responsible to having established the new Tourism Authority Board, but with his entrepreneurial tenacity, it was inevitable he would contribute to Niue's economic development with the opening of his family's small motel business in Avasele and developing their business interests such as the Island Styles restaurant and bar. Furthermore, the construction and opening of the now scenic Matawai Resort during his time as Minister for Tourism. Amongst the reputable list of contributions to the community, he was the first NIOFA coordinator and was instrumental in gaining accreditation for the Niue organic farming sector and Vigro to New Zealand. Honourable Paumale Pavihi six years ago became a Matai, earning prestigious recognition in Samoa, not only becoming part of the chiefly system there in Samoa, but acknowledging only Matais are eligible to become members of parliament. In following Samoan cultural protocol, for this reason, Pomale would be his formal address in any announcement originating from his grandmother, Lili Tua Utu Peter's village of Loli'i. An outstanding and leading member of the church, village and government of Niue, Honorable Pomale Pavihi leaves behind his wife, Sipatonga Pavihi, children and grandchildren, and a legacy that the nation will not forget. There is a danger in our language moving towards the endangered stage and with our population we do not have the numbers to sustain the Rangaho. This is the comment of, from the Director for Education, Bertha Tongahai, as the department promotes this year as the International Year for Rangaho Niue. Tongahai says they are encouraging Niueans abroad not just in New Zealand mm -hmm. but also in Australia to learn and pass on the Rangaho. There is a danger in our language uh, moving towards the endangered stage and with our population we do not have the numbers to sustain the Wangaho. 
for uh, uh, how to exist, I, I believe there should be 5,000 speakers. So that's why we're encouraging all our new peoples abroad, not just in New Zealand, but also in Australia, for them to to learn and pass on the Mangahau. And especially um, this year is the UNESCO International Year for, for Indigenous Languages. So the uh, Department of Education is promoting this year as the International Year for Wangahau Niwi. So all the programs in the two schools are targeting uh, not just the Wangahau, but also the crafts and performing arts. And as you know, there's the Niwe Cultural Art Festival coming up in April. So all those things um, helps to sustain our Wangahau. But definitely the numbers, um, I mean, I, I believe every census in New Zealand, the, num the fluent speakers of Wangahau Niwe seems to decrease. But we need to raise awareness and actually speak it to ensure the survival of Wangau Niwe and it's a responsibility of everybody, not just the Department of Education, not just Taonga Niwe Department, but I guess it needs strong government leadership, strong support from the private sector as well as the non-government organizations. Niue is the fifth country in the Pacific to have a qualification in its native language studies at the University of the South Pacific. The course was produced by the Taonga Niue, the Niue Language Commission, with the help of the Education Department and was launched last year during the University of the South Pacific Council meeting held in Nauru. The certificate in Wangaho Niue uh, was the initiative of the Commissioner of Wangaho Niue, the Niue Language Commission, Taonga Niue Council, and um, assisted by the Departments of Education in Taonga Niue. So uh, this is the first qualification that's in progress, but there is a high interest of um, offering basic conversation in Wangahau Niue and cultural protocols to our non-Niue uh, teachers. So Commissioner Wangahau Niue is also looking at developing uh, that course, and I'm sure there are other qualifications also in, in the process that, you know, this certificate will, is the catalyst of, um, you know, setting other, other courses like canoe making and all, you know, we have all this traditional knowledge and, and, and expertise that we need to, you know, to get our people educated and also gain qualifications for it. According to the Acting Premier and Minister for the Ministry of Social Services, Honourable Pili Graham Tahalangi, this course is the Wangahau Niwe Academic Language Course and Qualification, driven and owned by Niweans. This is Niwe's first university qualification, which he says is a historical milestone. The introduction of the Wangahau Niwe Certificate coincides with the 2019 UNESCO International Year of Indigenous Languages. All our teachers who are bilingual teach the Wangahau Niwe, so this course is also uh, targeting them to upskill and improve their expertise in Wangahau. The course uh, specializes in grammar, so like morph morphology, uh, the lexical of Wangahau, the structure, the grammar, all those intricate features of Avangaho will be unpacked and uh, taught to whoever or the students who are undertaking the Avangaho Niwe One course uh, this semester. The Avangaho Niwe Face to Face course will be taught by Sifaoli Ioane, Peter Sonita Anaki, and Berfa Tonga Hai. The government believes sustaining Avangaho Niwe through high level qualifications requires strong leadership, not only from the government but from NGOs, civil society, private sectors and Niue people abroad to ensure that Niue stays relentless, vigilant and continue to be caretakers of the Wangahau Niue. Moving forward with the course, the Education Department, Taonga Niue and the Language Commission make the Wangahau Niue course available to Niueans overseas to study online. Hopefully next year we will be able to complete uh, the course on the Muru and offer it to our Niwe peoples abroad so they can enroll online and also um, um, appoint some language experts overseas in New Zealand and Australia to assist students who are keen 
to pursue this uh, qualification. But there is a high interest uh, from overseas at the moment. So I told him that if they're interested, they can come and attend the summer school so they can visit the homeland and have a look around. But. Um, hopefully this is the course to increase the number of people who are knowledgeable ab about Avangaho and if you're passionate about your Avangaho, this course is highly recommended because it delves deeper into the intricate uh, uh, aspects of Avangaho Niwi. So very interesting you know, because you learn about the linguistics or the science of Avangaho Niwi and I'm sure there are people out there who are interested in you know, doing research on Wangaho as well. Over 10 people have applied to undertake the Wangaho Niwe course at USB and is expected to start next month. Katrina Toifasi, BCN News. Finalising U.S. draft fisheries legislation has gained momentum over the course of the week with two farm fisheries agency experts on the island helping U.S. Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. Key stakeholders attended the meeting held yesterday, led and facilitated by the key agency, the Department of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries. For New World to comply with its uh, international obligations, we need to really update the fisheries uh, laws. Director for DAF Poi Okisene alluded to the ongoing marine spatial planning legislative review, also pertinent to protection of marine resources, where he expressed it was important to include agencies such as New Oceanwide Ocean Wide and Ridge to Reef projects. Similarly, it was extremely important with the outdated legislation that it was to be aligned with existing regional and international instruments, noting the ever-evolving developments, including that under the Western Central Pacific Fisheries Commission and CITES. One provision new to the legislative document is that of Niue becoming a flag state, which FFA expert Sean Nabo was able to elaborate on. I guess there are a lot of uh, benefits for a flag state. You, can, you have your own vessel. You have the benefit of uh, employing your own people on, the, on board. Your catch, you can uh, determine where you process your catch, and then that will be counted too to your catch within your zones. But also you have other benefits like fishing in other uh, countries' waters. The draft fisheries legislation is intended on being submitted to Cabinet for approval this coming April. As a new academic year for New High School began this week, an increase has been recorded in the enrollment numbers. The school committee is striving for another year of excellence. A total of 218 students have enrolled this year compared to 200 students last year. It's been a busy year already, uh, even though it's, um, it's week one. Uh, but it's been really busy in trying to, um, to put things in place that we will be doing for the year. Um, we are not looking at any major changes for 2019, um, but looking at the programs that we've got um, um, from, from before and trying to, to make sure that those uh, things are, are working well. Um, I believe uh, evaluation is an important aspect of, uh, of uh, making sure that we're doing things uh, this as quickly as possible for, for our students. At the end of the day, the students are here um, expecting a, um, a very good education um, uh, system for them, and that's what we hope to provide. The NCEA results are yet to be released. I guess in the next couple of weeks uh, that those numbers will be finalised by uh, NCQA, and then um, obviously a paper will have to go to um, Cabinet, um, and, and obviously the results will be made, um, made known to the general public. But in general, um, judging by the, the, um, the provisional results that we have received, um, New High School continues to do well um, in NCA um, uh, exams and NCA achievement overall. Um, and it's been consistent. I think that's the most um, pleasing thing. Uh, from uh, a staff and a principal perspective um, that it's been consistent over a, a number of, of years and yeah it, it is quite pleasing for us but in saying that we also know as a as a teaching staff that there are areas that we can um, still look into 
in trying to do the best that we can for our students. Niue High School is also planning to field another team for the Athletics Championship meet in New Zealand this year, following their historic gold medal win last year. Last year we were fortunate um, for one of our students to, to do very well at the New Zealand uh, Championships that they attended at the end of the year. And, and so is the whole team as well. Uh, the other athletes that actually attended that, they um, performed their personal bests. And it was, for them, it was the first time to, to go out of uh, Niue and, and perform at a, a meet like that. So from our perspective, I, I guess the, the experience um, will be very, very valuable for those uh, students. Um, yeah, but uh, the focus has always been on, on um, ensuring that our students uh, achieve to their potential, whether that is uh, in the classroom or outside of the classroom. Uh, there's no uh, change for this year. We are uh, expecting to, to put a team together again. Um, and again, the, the selection process will be uh, quite difficult for the students. It's not, it's not uh, a matter of just putting your name in and, and you're good to go. Um, there are standards that we as a school have, have put in place and um, being the second year I suppose uh, the standards will only get harder because we, we now know what to we kind of know now what to expect. The principal has called for continued support from the community. Sophia Kuritano, BCN News. Niwa's creativity was showcased in the film festival held last night. The screening included films showcasing Niue's cultural heritage, youth, marine life and food security. The Kifanga Niue Film Festival, which started in 2015, is a celebration of Niue and cultural identity, talent and collaboration of the many creativity. An initiative to explore and develop the filmmaking experience of Niue and filmmakers, taking advantage of the advancement of technology. This is for showcasing films made by Niueans in Niue and Niuean communities around the world. Organizers hope the initiative will get Niuean storytellers to tell our stories to the world. That ends our news for tonight. Have a great evening. Nono fo'a moimonuina.